we are aware of the body in the sitting posture and we allow the mind to rest on the body just as the body rests on the cushion this is the hub of the wheel of our practice all body awareness that simple knowing Atikayo there is a body this whole body awareness we can maintain while moving through the four satipatthanas and when moving out into the world as a support for the continuity of our mindfulness resting with mindfulness on this whole body and without losing this whole body awareness or whenever we lose it coming back to it we will now move to the four satipatthanas we start with the three body contemplations anatomical parts elements and cemetery contemplations anatomical parts we simplify just take skin flesh and bones so we start with the skin we are aware of the skin the head area to the extent we are able to feel it or just knowing it is there from the head to the throat neck shoulders both shoulders simultaneously down upper arms lower arms hands a way of skin tacho front of the torso upper part lower part back of the torso upper part lower part hips a way of skin upper legs lower legs and feet and we are aware of this whole body covered with skin flesh we start from the feet fleshy parts in the feet moving up lower legs upper legs hips lower torso upper torso both hands lower arms upper arms shoulders neck and fleshy parts in the head and we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture of the fleshy parts in this body just flesh mouths bones starting from the head we are aware of the skull neck bones shoulder bones upper arm bones in the lower arm bones in the hands chest area down the spinal cord 
bones in the hip area, in the upper leg, lower leg, and feet. And we are aware of this whole body, of the bones in this whole body, of the skeleton. And we are aware of this whole body made up of skin, flesh and bones with the understanding each of these parts of this body have an important function to keep the body alive but none of them is sexually attractive. This body is a subha. It is not sexually attractive. And we move on to the elements. Earth, water, fire, and wind, hardness, fluidity and cohesion, temperature and motion. Earth element is found throughout the whole body, but the parts where we can most easily experience it are the bones. So we start again. We are aware of earth element in the head, in particular evident in the skull, but pervading the whole head, earth element in the head. And we move down, shoulders, upper arms, lower arms, hands, upper torso, lower torso, hip area, upper leg, lower legs and feet. And we are aware of this whole body perverted by solidity, earth element, patavi. Water liquidity, fluidity, cohesion found throughout the whole body but particularly evident in the fleshy parts of the body the blood, the different bodily liquids start from the feet aware of the fact that these feet are pervaded by liquidity, fluidity, cohesion by the water element and from the feet upwards, lower legs, upper legs, hips, lower torso, upper torso, hands, lower arms, upper arms, shoulders, neck, and head. And we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture pervaded by the what element? Apo. Fire element. Temperature. Heat. Warmth. pervades the entire body but we are particularly easily to notice for us at the skin level we start with the head away of the head and away of the head being provided by some temperature some warmth or coolness way of temperature 
as a manifestation of the fire element. From the head to the shoulders, upper arms, lower arms, hands, upper torso, lower torso, hips, upper legs, lower legs and feet. And we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture as pervaded by the Pi element, Tichu. Wind element, any kind of motion. Wind element found throughout the whole body, but the part where we most easily can notice it is the breath. We start from the feet, aware of the fact that the feet are pervaded by motion, by the wind element. From the feet to the lower legs, upper legs, hips, lower torso, upper torso, hands, lower arms, upper arms, shoulders, neck and head. And we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture as pervaded by the wind element. Earth, water, fire, and wind, fire. This is the constitution of this body made up of these four, exactly the same as nature outside, not different. Nothing special about this body. Nothing I can truly own. Just a process of solidity, fluidity, temperature and motion. Oh, this body is sanatta. It is not self. It is not something I can forever own. Not something that provides a solid basis for my creation of a sense of identity. This body is sanatta, not self. Cemetery contemplations. Awareness of the mortality of this body. This body is going to die. This body is going to die. No escape. It is destined to die and fall apart. And if it were left out in the open, it would go through the stages of decay described in the Sutta. And if we wish, for a moment, we may flash up one of those images that we find useful, maybe a skull or a skeleton, just to remind us of the mortal nature of this body. And we are aware of the breath. With every inhalation, aware of the fact this could be my last breath. 
can't be sure. It could be the last. And with every outbreath, with every exhalation, we let go, we relax, letting go, relax. If you find this practice is too agitating, we give more emphasis on the outbreath. Just letting go and relaxing. If we find this practice is not really stirring up a clear awareness of all mortality, we give more importance to the in-breath, to the fact that this could be the last. And even if it is not the last, it is certainly one breath closer to death. So important for us to allow death to become part of our life. This is the only way we can come truly alive. No longer ignoring death. No longer pretending it is not there. Death is part of life. And by making it part of life, we become so alive to the present moment. This is the only time when we can live, here and now, not in the past, not in the future, here and now, fully alive to the present moment, the only time when we can live. And from having done these three body contemplations, come to the understanding that this body is not sexually attractive, it is not self, and it is mortal. We move on to the second Satipatthana. Feelings it can be pleasant, it can be painful or unpleasant can be neutral, can be bodily, can be mental. We start looking out for bodily feelings by scanning the body one more time. This time feeling the body, being aware of that feeling part of the mind that connects with the body and aware of the affective tone of that feeling whether it is neutral or maybe at times pleasant or unpleasant. Start with the head, feeling the head, shoulders, upper arms, lower arms, hands, upper torso, lower torso, hips, upper legs, lower legs, and feet. And based on this feeling of the whole body, we open up the sphere of our awareness to any kind of mental feeling that may manifest. Just knowing pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And as we keep practicing in this way, our awareness of feeling over time becomes clearer we become aware of more subtle kind of feelings that we earlier did not notice. One of these is a very subtle pain 
in the body to make us want to move around, shift here, change a little bit there. This body is such that there is no posture in which it could stand forever or lie forever or sit forever. Sooner or later we are forced to change posture. This body is painful. Its nature is to create pain. And we are constantly involved in alleviating that painful feeling. Hunger or thirst, too hot, too cold, pressure, itching, whatever it may be, there's a subtle pain involved in having a body. When we are aware of mental feelings, we also notice a subtle feeling, and this is pleasurable. The pleasure of being in the present moment, a very subtle pleasure. very soft, but as we keep noticing it, it becomes stronger. The pleasure of being aware in the present moment. And another thing we notice. And that is that these feelings constantly change from one to the other. All feelings are impermanent. All feelings change. Every feeling is a messenger of impermanence, messenger of change. like winds blowing in the sky, this direction, this direction, always changing. Every feeling is a messenger of impermanence. And without losing our whole body awareness, the foundation of our practice and that felt sense of impermanence, that feeling, that awareness of feeling as something changing. We now proceed to the third Satipatthana, contemplation of the mind. We turn to that which knows, that which knows the body, that which knows feelings, that faculty of knowing. And that faculty of knowing is also impermanent, simply because it keeps knowing different things. If it were permanent, it would be forever frozen in the condition of knowing one single thing. But this is not the case. This knowing faculty, this mind, is also changing, constantly changing. Just the process, just the flux. And as we keep sitting with this whole body awareness, feeling change, knowing change, sooner or later the mind is bound to wander away. This is natural. This is the natural tendency of the mind. Without in the least little bit getting upset about this, without in the least little bit being judgmental about it, 
when we realize smilingly, smilingly, oh, the mind has wandered away. And if the mind has wandered away just a little while, just for a short time, somewhat like meeting somebody on the road, saying hello, how are you, and moving on, we just come back to whole body awareness, to feeling and knowing change, and continue with our practice. But at times, the mind really takes us for a ride. It really moves on for a long time. Somewhat like meeting somebody on the road and going to some coffee shop, sit down, have a cup of coffee together, discuss something. If the mind has taken us for a long ride, and we want to recognize, was this train of thought sensual desire or aversion or just delusion, kind of daydreaming? We make a clear point of recognizing these three basic types of mind desire, aversion, delusion and as we come back to our practice of resting in whole body awareness opening up to present moment experience, to the flow of present moment experience, for a short moment we still keep a look out for the desire or aversion or delusion that had happened just earlier. Just be sure it's not coming back. And also to feel how pleasant it is when we are without that condition, to be clearly aware, look, this is a mind without desire, feeling that subtle pleasure of being in the present moment. Look, this is a mind without anger, without aversion. Look, this is a mind that is not rolling in some deluded daydreaming, but is fully in the present moment, aware, so beautiful, so pleasant. Joy. This is something we are entitled to rejoice in when the mind is temporary free from these three. And we continue with this whole body awareness, feeling change, knowing change, mindfulness, very wide, aware, awake, allowing whatever happens, sounds, other things, just pass by, firmly established in this resting of the mind on the body. this awareness, this present moment, precious present moment, and we are ready to move into the fourth Satipatthana. We will investigate this mind. Let me see, is there some sensual desire in the mind now, or anger? Sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry, or maybe doubt. We really scrutinize this mind, we investigate. And if you find that any of these five hindrances are in the mind, we try to understand how it happened, 
how did we get into that? And we also try to understand how can we get out of that. And there comes a time, however much we investigate, we find no. No desire in the mind, no anger, no sloth and torpor, no restlessness and worry, no doubt. Mind is free from the hindrances. Mind is crystal clear like water. Not colored by desire, not boiling in anger, not overgrown by the algae of sloth and torpor, not tossed around by the wind of restlessness and worry, not muddied and in the dark by doubt. What a wonderful mind! I have paid off a debt, I have recovered from a disease, I have escaped from slavery and prison, I have completed a dangerous journey, safely, we rejoice, this is wholesome joy, we are entitled to it, rejoice in this crystal clear beautiful mind that is temporarily free. Yes, the roots of defilements are still there. We are not putting this in doubt. But for the time being, they do not manifest. For the time being, this mind is free from them. And as we keep investigating this condition, we find how did this joy come into existence? How did it happen? Look, I was mindful, mindfulness. I was investigating, investigation of dharmas. And I continued to investigate, I had energy. And this joy arose. And this joy is a soothing type of joy. It leads to tranquility, to the mind becoming concentrated and balanced. Oh, these are the awakening factors. Yes, they're very tiny, small little buds, but every bud can grow into a flower. We are ready to flower into awakening with these seven factors in our mind. And with these seven factors established in the mind, still there, whole body awareness, feeling impermanence, knowing impermanence, Seven awakening factors present in the mind. Knowing impermanence. Change. Everything is a process. Anicca. And from knowing impermanence, we become dispassionate. Letting go of passion, diminishing passion. Iraga. What passion for things that anyway are changing. Meaningless. Clinging, grasping, craving. Meaningless. We allow the implications of impermanence to transform our affective attitude. We allow dispassion to grow. Iraga. And with the growth of this passion, we become better able to allow things to end. And this awareness of impermanence become 
we become in particular aware of cessation, disappearing, coming to an end, of that cutting edge of impermanence, that everything disappears, present moment gone, so and so feeling gone, this and type of mind gone, this particular condition of the body gone, ending, allowing things to end, allowing things to cease, finding out about the peace of cessation, Niruddha, peaceful, very peaceful, just allowing things to end. And from allowing things to end, we come to letting go. Patini Sangha, Vos Sangha, letting go. Letting go. So profound. This is dwelling independently without clinging to anything in the world. Anisito Javiharati na Chikin Jilung Kyupa Diyati Letting go. The hub of the wheel of all practice, whole body awareness, the seven spokes, three spokes body contemplations, one spoke feeling, one spoke mind, another two spokes, hindrances and awakening factors. All four satipatthanas converging on this hub of whole body awareness. Continuity of mindfulness. Feeling change, knowing change, establishing awakening factors. Impermanence, dispassion, cessation, letting go. Anisito Javiharati na Chikin Jilu Gyobadiyati. We dwell independently, without clinging to anything, anything.